Hello, this is Victor Nunez, and I wanted to do a book review and spread the word also about the Moses Scroll. Oh, it's upside down. The Moses Scroll by Ross K. Nichols. So, um, obviously the author is the best person to explain this. So he has multiple videos on YouTube. Um, there's also an AI video you can watch. It's pretty short, about 15 minutes, and it describes the whole story um, pretty quickly. And so the Moses Scroll is actually one of the Dead Sea Scrolls before the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. And it was written entirely in Paleo-Hebrew. And they, uh, basically, long story short, it's it's the book of Deuteronomy in the first person. Um, believed, perhaps, perhaps, to have been written by Moses himself. Like, this, this was the surviving uh, piece of paper or manuscript from Moses. And um, reason being is because um, uh, the guy that found it, his name was Moses Shapira. And he was a Jew who was a Christian. And so he um, he was trying to make this known as he got it through uh, one of the, you know, salesmen that had searched the cave and was trying to make a decent dollar. So um, in his notes, he would try to read them because, you know, the paper would get dark in some areas. So he would spill alcohol on it and try to read read it and none of the ink none of the ink would smear um in fact if i can show you real quick the way that the moses scroll was found is in the form of a book so this would have uh, paleo writing this would have paleo writing and then the back side would be uh, like a black tar substance. So every time it was folded, it was folded where a text page would touch the text. And then if it was folded again, it was the tar and the tar would touch, and then the text and the text. And so it would basically just unfold and unfold. So it wasn't a it wasn't a scroll it was a book about six inches and or so um tall and then depending on how many uh, pieces of paper were sewn together uh pretty wide um but yeah the the ink would not rub off it would not smear it was like permanent but also um the paper had been pretty pretty well preserved for being really really old and they they denied it at first because it was too well preserved and so they were dismissing it as a forgery um, especially because it was written in paleo and not in the modern hebrew um, but what is interesting is that it was very well preserved and i think that the black tar substance behind the pages where the text is written, um, kept the paper from deteriorating. Uh, they never found out what the substance was. Uh, they never, I mean, they did test, they just couldn't figure out what it was. Um, it's all in the book, too. So I, I think that the black substance preserved the paper from decaying, which, you know, and the ink, I am not sure, but it was not, it was not smudged or removable. It was pretty much like permanent and uh, would not get damaged. So um, story goes that uh, Moses Shapiro was on a breakthrough and uh, most of the scholarship world was against him. And he tried to get it authenticized by friends and many other famous um, Europeans at the time as the, in the early eight, uh in the early 19th century, um, most of the biblical scholars were Europeans. In fact, one of the one of the books in here that is recommended to get 
is an introduction to the Old Testament by Frederick, oh, by Bleak Frederick. Um, and this is biblical knowledge from 1793 to 1859. So this is stuff we probably won't, this is, there's a lot of stuff in here that uh, is Old Testament history that we are not familiar with anymore. So that was one of the books that the Moses Scroll recommended. Um, because there's, there needs to be an understanding of what the Moses Scroll is. And so if you believe that Moses wrote the Torah, um, the book goes into, well, he only wrote the book of Deuteronomy. And he only wrote the Moses Scroll, the book of Deuteronomy, which is a lot shorter than the... 34 chapters that we have um, and given that it's uh, you know in 2nd Kings when no 2nd Chronicles when King Josiah finds the Torah scroll and they read it right away um, like twice they read it twice in a day and they're able to tell everybody about it quickly so uh, the book gives you everything that was written and recorded um, from Mr. Shapira in his notes and pictures taken from the British libraries and so on and so on. So the interesting thing is that the Ten Commandments are actually a little different than ours. Um, the Ten Commandments that we know are nine in the Moses Scroll. So I think the First and Second Commandment are merged together. Um, and then the Tenth Commandment is do not hate your brother in your heart. I am Elohim, your Elohim. And so it doesn't have the name of God in there, but it's, it identifies him as Elohim, your Elohim, like a lot. So um, there's a big old discussion about that in the book. And I um, don't really want to get into it. But yeah, I wanted to, to spread this because one of the, one of the key things that the book... Uh, the, the whole controversy of the Moses scroll in its own time period in the 1880s was that um, one, it wasn't authentic because it disagreed or it was different than the scriptures that we had, but it was a it was an it was an authentic second book of Deuteronomy, uh, most likely written by the hand of Moses, um, or if not, you know, very very relatively. Um, uh, after him by somebody uh, because they, they date it back to about 900 you know BC uh, first temple they believe it might have been a document preserved from the first temple because of how well it was preserved and like I said I, I believe the black substance kept the paper from right from rotting which kept it preserved um, but back to the message in the book it says would you rather Believe in a document that is false. Which is the greater sin? Believing in a document that is false or not believing in a document and calling it false and it is real? Which is the greater sin? And so I, I believe that all the scholars in that time period were against the Moses scroll because it's 60 plus years before the Dead Sea Scrolls are found, but it's found from them. In the exact same place and so I, I wish we had it today because it's gone and um, we uh, you know they say that Moses Shapiro committed suicide no he did not so you can look into that um, yourselves it's pretty clear that he didn't uh, he was on the breakthrough of pretty much getting it recognized because he got a lot of he got a lot of recognition for it, and so I think people were will as much as scholars disagreed with it. It it could have happened. It could have happened where it was passed as authentic because it was written in paleo, and very well preserved, and the differences inside are quite unique. And the layout of Deuteronomy when it says that they traveled um, from this place to this place to this place right um 
a lot of people disregard our modern text of Deuteronomy because they say that the the way that Moses writes it is is all out of order according to the ancient map. Like we go here, we go here, we go here, we go here, and he has it where like you're kind of going all over the place. And so they say that our modern text does not, you know, that's one of the faults of our modern text. But in the Moses scroll, because it's written by Moses in first person, it's actually, you know, from point A, B, C, D, and so on. It's like there. The landmarks he records are, are pretty much in perfect alignment with the ancient map. Uh, then the Ten Commandments difference is also in there. Um, the name of God, you know, Elohim, uh, being recognized as Elohim first, uh, which goes back to, yes, he, most likely before Exodus 3, when he gives his name to Moses, most likely everyone prior to Moses did not know the name of God. Uh, and that's what this text actually insists. Um, because of the way that it's written. It's like writing Exodus without the name of God. You know, it's um, it's one of those uh, studies. But anyway, um, yeah, believing in a book, believing in something and calling it fake, even though it's real, is the greater sin. And this has such a common theme today with another subject about the Hebrew New Testament. And these, I believe, and many others, believe are authentic. And it supports a lot of us in the Messianic movement about our perception of the Greek scriptures that are Torah observant versus how the Christians um, teach otherwise. And this actually backs us up a lot better. But however, um, these manuscripts in the New Testament are, are not recognized either. And the scholars uh, behind it are doing the work. They're just trying to translate it and get it out. And uh, the scholarly world does not want to accept them. One, because they approve of the Torah. And two, because they believe the, the, Hebrew, the scriptures were written in Greek originally. And there should be no Hebrew copies whatsoever. And then, uh, yeah, they're not going to like what it says. Because it, it says, you know, we should be Torah observant in many areas. So, um, I believe the Moses scroll has something in common with this New Testament manuscript. And it's that the scholarly world is wrong. Majority is wrong. Only time will tell. But we have the authentic New Testament text, or at least copies of them. Not originals, obviously, but copies of the originals. And uh, same thing with the Moses scroll. It was an original Deuteronomy text. And the modern scholarship would not recognize it. And a hundred plus years later, it's too late to recognize it because it's gone. Once Shapira died, within a year or two, the manuscripts were sold like twice out of his possession from the British Library to private um, auctions. And then from there to another auction and then they're just gone. So, uh, I recommend that you get this book, The Moses Scroll. I recommend that you watch Ross K. Nichols explain the story or watch the AI story explain the story. It's very scandalous. I recommend that you get the, the introductory to the Old Testament book by this man from this time period because that is this has a lot of uh, biblical knowledge I think you would find um, very useful and educational. A lot of the arguments and beliefs of that time period that we just don't hear anymore or completely ignore. And this wasn't even that long ago. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching. 
and I hope you look into it. I'm also going to do more Hebrew New Testament. So stay tuned. But as for now, I just wanted to link the connection between the two as I believe um, as I believe both are very important and without stealing all the thunder from the researchers, I just leave you with that and say Shalom and study your Bible. Pray that the Holy Spirit leads you um, away from false doctrine. Uh, I, I, I personally have been led to read these by the Holy Spirit because um, I know many will come against um, these books. Many already do. And so you have to be called by the Holy Spirit to read it. If you're not being called, then you can pretty much just buy into any doctrine. So I hope I was pretty clear and um, recommended some good books for you to study and good topics for you to study. And I'll be sharing more, um, less about the Moses scroll. I just wanted to get the word out on that because I'm not going to cover it as good as the book does or as good as the author does in his videos. But there's more to the New Testament stuff that I will be covering uh, because this is not covered by very many at all. So it has to start somewhere. So thank you and Shalom.